Android 15 is here and it's available to download on compatible Google Pixel devices from the Google Pixel 6 all the way up to the Google Pixel 9. My download size was around 1GB, I have it installed in the Google Pixel 9 and here's every new change available right now. I'm Desi and these are the new changes available on Android 15 right now. Let's begin. This is without a doubt the biggest change or updates to the Android system and is the introduction of private space. It's like a whole different device within your main device that allows you to log into a completely different account and install separate apps and operate everything within a hidden space. Private space. It's hidden under lock and key and will require a totally separate pin code to keep everything safe. To activate it, head to settings, security and privacy, and select the private space section. Once activated, it will take you through the entire setup process of creating a separate pin from your main lock screen pin and once done, you would see a separate section at the bottom of the app library named Private. Opening it is a totally different app library UI from your main one. If you don't want to see the private section showing up in your app drawer, you can completely hide it within a setting. Another heavily requested addition is App Pairs. It allows you to now save split screen app pairs for easy access to those specific app combos in split screen. This was heavily requested for the foldable devices but it works the same for standard regular devices. To set this, simply enter split screen mode with the two apps you'd love to pair. Enter the recently used app section, long press on the split screen apps, tap the app icon and tap save app pair. Once you're done, a new pair icon appears on the home screen and you can easily enter split screen with those particular two apps. Really convenient for people who use split screen a lot. This isn't a major groundbreaking change, but it adds to the visual changes of Android 15 when comparing against Android 14, and is the updated visual outlook of the volume controls. In Android 14, you had smaller, thinner control sliders that sometimes may be difficult to use, but with Android 15, there are these new, bold, bigger control sliders you can easily make use of to adjust your volume controls. They have these new animations that look great when making use of the volume controls and I love it. The labels reposition themselves when you slide on them. More like a dynamic repositioning and they really fit perfectly in the whole pixel dynamic. You can also switch audio outputs right within this new panel. A smaller UI change worth mentioning because you probably wouldn't notice is an upgrade to screenshots, at least the previews. There's an updated screenshot preview panel that's more rounded to fit the pixel UI. The share and edit buttons are also rounded to reflect these changes. Pretty subtle, but still worth mentioning. The next update is pretty huge, and a lot of people would love it, and is the update or inclusion to the Android protection suite of services. It however isn't exclusive to just Android 15, since Google has stated it will be rolling out to even Android 10 devices, but since it was mentioned in Google's own blog, and as a major part of Android 15, I'm mentioning it here. The first one is Android theft protection that uses on-device sensors and AI to determine if your device is being stolen and automatically locking it to prevent access to your personal data. The next one is the offline device lock. And what it does is it automatically locks your device when a thief tries to disable internet connectivity to prevent tracking. And the last feature is remote lock that, like the name says, allows you to remotely lock your device by visiting the Android Lock website from literally any web browser. These features are currently being rolled out and you can test it out yourself to see how good it works and form your own opinions on how secure and reliable it is. You can find it within Settings, the Google section, All Services tab, and Personal and Device Safety. You should find it right there. Last but not least is a really cool addition. One that has been in existence on iOS devices for some time and is important for certain reasons. And that's the ability for Bluetooth to be automatically turned on when it's been off for a long period of time. This is useful when you have certain accessories paired with your device that require Bluetooth to be connected or for features like quick share, but in situations where you accidentally turn off your Bluetooth or intentionally turn it off and forget. This setting will automatically turn it on. There are many more features I'll be covering over the next few days, so make sure to be subscribed and turn on the bell icon to be notified when those videos drop.
I'm Desi. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.